Today, we are extremely happy to host Ms. Zuja Vashish, who is currently working as a software uh, engineer at Amazon and also happens to be a 2020 graduate from the Velour Institute of Technology uh, in the field of electronics and communication engineering. She has won various accolades during her time in VIT, including Economic Times Campus Stars 2019-20. We are really looking forward to knowing more of her journey. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Uh, so without wasting any more time, I'll just directly go into the questions that have been bundled up. Um, so Dujab, when you first joined uh, engineering in VIT, uh, what do you think were some of the problems that you faced and you know, uh, what motivated you to take up graphic designing along with pursuing ECE? So when I first joined VIT, you know, in a big engineering college, I think the first thing or a culture shock that I think most of us get in a situation like this is Hey, this is an incredibly big college and I was in electronics so there were close to maybe 800 ish kids in electronics as well and my first thought was that every other fresher that I met from all these different parts of the country seemed to have all these things going on they all seemed to have their life together and they all seemed to have this very set idea of how they wanted their life to go and when I first joined I felt you know be honestly a little bit lost with things like that and I decided hey my first like question that stuck in my mind was what am I going to do to make myself stand out from like all these other kids who are doing the same degree or who are doing you know a little, little bit of a different degree but from the same college so I think that's why I started to pursue these random other course scholastic activities because I just wanted to like learn something that was new because I was like I'm at college I'm learning I'm doing all my courses that I'm supposed to do but other than that how can I make the best of the situation and VIT has all these opportunities that Honestly, even if I spent eight years there, I don't think I would have been able to do all of them. And I was like, I have to make the best of all of these situations. I have to make the best of all these opportunities, these clubs, these events. So that's pretty much what I did. And when I joined IEEE, I met a lot of, I was not the club that I joined, where I met so many seniors, which were so talented in all these different fields. And graphic designing was something that I was always interested in because I thought I was always a little bit creative and I had all these ideas of how I wanted to create things, but I didn't know the necessary technical tools behind them. So I had seniors teach me in IEEE, you know, graphic design, and I, I loved that experience. And for me, it was a full circle experience of, of sorts as well, because I think future, in the future, by the time I was in third, fourth year, I got to teach, you know, the other juniors of IEEE, as well as juniors in the college as well, graphic design. So that was pretty, you know, an amazing experience to start off as someone who didn't know anything, learn, and then get to teach other people as well. Oh, right. And, oh. Talking about that, the very first thing, the competition that exists. Uh, how do you think, uh, how important do you think are grades and you know, how necessary to you know, uh, focus on these uh, aspects, like studying at the very beginning? So I think grades are definitely important. In the beginning, I think everyone focuses on grades because, you know, they come to college, they have this, this like josh in them where they're like, oh, I have to like, do all these things I have to like do well in all my classes like I'm gonna sit on the front desk etc etc but I feel like for a lot of us it tends to die down by the time we're like by the time we're in third fourth this year because we've just done it for so long but I think grades are definitely very important I think a lot of us tend to just avoid them or ignore them because there's so many other things we could be doing which are so much more fun and a lot of the times when you know you look at grades and then you think about how important are they really because no matter what you do in college no matter what you want to do outside maybe you want to do higher studies it could be you know in a stem field or you might want to do something completely different or you might want to do a job whatever you end up doing an interviewer you know an employer or a college admission board whoever it is that's looking at your application grades are important because they show that how committed you can be long term to a situation how committed you can be to you know, for the four years of college, every semester, you have consistently gotten good grades, you haven't slacked off, you like work hard, you know, consistently apart from doing these other things. So grades are just one of the best showcases that you have that hey, I've been consistent, and I'm determined and focused for a long stretch of time. I'm not just a person who like studies for a week, or attends a hackathon and wins medals, because everyone does that. I think grades are a very good, you know, level of a lot of these things. But also they're not the most important thing or the only important thing when it comes to your college life. Because at the end of the day, a lot of companies or a lot of colleges look at grades as, yes, it's important. And for them, a lot of the time it's just a benchmark. It's just a cutoff point where they're like, we're only going to shortlist candidates which have like a 8.5 and above or a nine and above. And after that, when you actually reach the interview stage or when you finally reach the last round, 
you have to show them or impress all these people from things apart from just your grades. So grades are important, yes, but at the end of the day, when you're you know in an interview and you're maybe competing next to a guy who has a 9.9 .9 CGPA and you have an 8.2 or something, the only thing which is going to matter is what you say in the interview and how much you know. But the grades are going to get you up until that point. Uh, you know, there are a lot of clubs and chapters here in VIT. Do you think clubs and chapters play a role in strengthening your work ethic and, you know, shaping you as an individual at the end of the day? So I think personally, I owe all of my, you know, little success or little opportunities that I've had had in life. I think I owe all of it just to all the clubs and chapters that I joined. Even the ones that I was a part of for like maybe a semester or maybe like two semesters. Because that's that's something that you can't get in a traditional college setting. Because when you work in a club and chapter, you learn all of these like side things which no one really tells you that you need to learn. But when you step out of the real world and you do a job, no matter what field you end up going in, that is something that you will need. It teaches you how to network with people. It teaches you strong work ethics. Like no matter what happens, how do you deliver on time? How do you make sure that even if you don't know how to do a certain task, how do you make sure that it gets done on time so that you can deliver it so you can like tell your seniors or your higher ups that, hey, I did this on time and I delivered. And no matter what you end up doing in life again, you will maybe reach a point in your life where you might have to work in a team where you, know, you might be the leader, you might be the one who has to make sure that the team is motivated. And clubs and chapters like just give you a small taste of that because they're going to teach you how to be a good leader. A lot of these clubs and chapters, I was lucky enough to be in the executive board for a few of them. So I got to you know experience that side of it as well. And all these things are important when you actually step out to the real world. Uh, right. Uh, so I ask something which is, you know, uh, I guess, you know, in the minds of everyone who is a person joining VIT in the very first place. So uh, when you were around in your later years in VIT, uh, how did you set out, you know, that you decided that, okay, I would go for placements or I'll work at Amazon or something like that. So how do you make your mind up with that? And also, we know that you're interned with Amazon as well. Uh, how as students uh, like us, you know, we can grab these opportunities whenever we can find these opportunities. Uh, what would be your take on that? So personally, I wasn't planning on sitting for placements. Uh, I had decided that, hey, I was going to do an MBA. And with Amazon, uh, I ended up uh, participating in a thing called the ACMS, which is the Amazon's Campus Mentorship Series. And it's specifically for women, where in my third year, I got to do like a work from home sort of uh, project with them. So it wasn't an internship, it was basically a mentorship program. So I had a mentor who was a software development engineer at Amazon and I did, you know, with my team, we did a project with them and every month I would, you know, leave college, go to the Amazon Chennai office, meet my mentor and like get feedback and stuff like that. And I got an internship through that. So I wasn't technically trying to sit for placements. I was just, you know, but again, Amazon was one of my dream companies. So when I found out, I think pretty early on in my fourth year that hey I was going to be able to intern with them I never sat for any other company because I was like this is it I want to intern here this is the company that I want to be at and I just focused on doing that but I think when it comes to grabbing opportunities like that the only thing that I have to say and it applies to everyone is sometimes we see all these opportunities pop up right in VIT you get all these emails or you might see a post or something and a lot of the times we look at it and we're like dude I would love to be you know, just selected for this, or I would love to win this, or I would love to intern at XYZ company. But there's always this like voice at the back of your head, which is tell you, hey, I don't think you're qualified enough. That's what I experienced with Amazon as well, because I was the only ACMS mentee that was not an IT or a CS student. And from what I had heard, there were barely any, or I think in my batch, probably zero of them, which were from other branches other than CS and IT. So when I was applying, I was like, I'm not going to get this, because I don't know CS and IT. I studied EC for like four years and that's the back of the head voice talking and telling you that hey you're not good enough for this so whenever you see opportunities whenever anyone sees opportunities just apply I've always looked at it as hey the worst thing that's going to happen to you in a case like this is that you're not going to get it you're going to get rejected after the first round maybe you get rejected after the second round and look at it as not just hey I feel bad because I did not get this internship but look at it as what can I take back from it and retrospect on why exactly did I not get selected for xyz thing oh, with regards to that what is the secret to you know keep yourself motivated keep yourself focused into getting what you deserve or what, what is your goal in life how, how, how hard is it to you know, stay in that path of uh, you attaining your success according to you 
So a lot of the times, I think, I don't know if it's a specific tech thing, but I've seen a lot of people who work in tech. It comes with a bit of an imposter syndrome because you constantly feel like, oh, you're not good enough for this job. You're not good enough for this internship, whatever, whatever that you end up doing. And sometimes it can get demotivating because you're like, what's the point of like getting up every day and working hard for something if I'm just going to fail at it anyway? What's the, what's the point of me waking up every morning trying to do well at this internship if there's a chance that I might not get the job at all or if there's a chance that I might you know, just be like the worst intern they've ever had. Just giving an example here. So a lot of the times when I get demotivated, you have to look at it as why exactly is your brain, you know, burnt out? Or a lot of the times we look at demotivation and we tend to like make ourselves feel bad about it because you tell yourself, hey, Bruja, you're being so unproductive today. You're not worth it. You're doing this, you're doing that. And a lot of the times we tend to push ourselves deeper and deeper into that like unmotivated hole where we just can't seem to get out of it. And we just can't seem to get ourselves to do all the things that we want to do. So you have to take a step back in times like this and kind of realize why exactly am I burnt out? Why exactly am I demotivated? Am I not getting enough rest? If that's not the case, try to have a proper schedule in which you're getting enough rest, eating enough healthy food. Or am I demotivated because my brain is just tired? Then maybe you need a break. Maybe you need like a vacation of sorts, which is not possible in the current climate. But, you know, we can do what we, what we can at the time. So a lot of the times looking at demotivation as, you know, why exactly are you not being able to work on time? Are you not enjoying what you're doing? If yes, try to find out a way to enjoy what you can do. Look at it as a signal from your brain that, hey, I'm tired. Hey, I don't want to do this. And cater to that. Maybe your brain's tired because you haven't hung out with your friends in two weeks. Call up a friend, FaceTime them, try to get them to motivate you. And look at the bigger picture of things. Sometimes it is important to do that, but sometimes it's important to just be like, hey, maybe I'll take it one day at a time. Right. Um, that brings me to a very important question, to be very honest. Uh, so we know, we all of us know here that you're an all-rounder. You even published a book at a very, very young age. And uh, how important do you think are uh, our hobbies? You know, crucial it is for us to nurture these hobbies as we go along the way. And uh, what is your take on this? How, how should we go about it? So I think hobbies are incredibly important and by hobbies I'm going to name it as something it doesn't have to be a skill of sorts it can just be something you do for fun but you have to have something in your life that you're doing just for yourself you know you're not doing this because you might get a paycheck from this you're not doing this because it might you know look good on your Instagram just giving an example here it's important for us to just like replenish our brains and just like have something creative that we do and for me if it's writing a book or reading a book or like I have a podcast as well so those are things that I've done completely for myself I don't have to answer to anyone when I do things like that and it's really important I think in this day and age where we're, we're all in this rat race where we constantly feel the need to be productive you know we feel unproductive if let's say we rest for an hour Sometimes I'll just sit and watch, you know, Netflix for a couple hours and I'll end up feeling bad about myself because, hey, I just spent two hours on Netflix. I wasn't doing productive. I could have done something better with these two hours. And I think everyone feels that way every once in a while. But I think it's important to remind yourself that you need to take time off and do something just to replenish your brain, just to refresh yourself. And it's actually going to help you do better at your job or your college or whatever you are doing, you know, on a more full-time basis. So I think it's definitely important to have hobbies and also try not to monetize everything. Another thing that I've seen going around a lot is when someone feels like they're really good at something, they instantly try to monetize it. They'll start an Instagram page, they'll start a website, they'll try to sell it, which I think is great that people hustle all the time and start new businesses. But at the same time, you have to realize and find the balance between, am I doing this because I enjoy this or am I doing this because I might in the future end up making this into a career or might in the future make something big with this. So for me, I've looked at my hobbies that I have, like podcasts and the writing. And I've tried to be very strict with myself in the terms of I'm never going to look at it as, you know, something that like shows how productive I am. This is for me. I don't care if people watch it. I don't care if people interact with it. I'm doing it for myself. And it's always helped me because I can work better in whatever other fields that I'm doing my job for now if I just take time out and do things just for myself. So I think it's important to do that. Your brain needs to not be a machine all the time. Uh, with that, we come uh, to the very end with the very last question that we have in mind for you. Uh, so, when you like, how important it is? Like, this is the age-old question that you know people ask. But how important is it for you to focus on your co-scholastic co areas to end up in companies like Amazon and other such dream companies? Uh, if you could tell tell us that. 
So I've always been the kind of person who focused a lot more on the course scholastic side of things. If you're looking at it from like a employer or a you know college admission board standpoint of things, I've always looked at it as hey, they see hundreds of resumes in a day. They're interviewing twenty other people in an hour. What makes you stand out? And a lot of the times, I've seen other people's resumes as well. Is that they will have all these amazing projects that they've done. For example, let's say you're someone who's adapted machine learning. You have these two amazing machine learning projects in your resume. They are incredible. They're better than any other machine learning project that other candidates might have on their resume. But most people or most interviewers probably will give your resume ten seconds or five seconds max, and that is not enough time. For you to convey to them, hey, this is my project. This is why it's better than the other ten projects that other people have written. This is why I'm better than everyone else when it comes to just my skill of machine learning. But having something simple that is going to make you stand out always will put you like it, it's basically your USP. It's your universal selling point. So for me, instead of putting like a cool project that I've done that I'm pretty sure they might skim over and never even look at in my resume, because I've had that happen to me before as well, they're only going to look at maybe three points of it, and if they capture interest, they capture interest. But if I have something simple like, hey, I'm a black belt in Taekwondo. So if I just write black belt in Taekwondo martial art, that's enough for them to understand, read in less than a second. It makes you stand out, and then it makes you. You're the girl who has this cool, cool thing on their resume. So I've always tried to make my resume look the most different from everyone else. And yes, it's a little bit of a risk sometimes to not have too many technical things on your resume. When I interviewed for Amazon, I Had no software development related projects in my resume at all because I hadn't done any that were worth it enough that would be better than other people's. But I had all these others, you know. I think cool different things that I think made me stand out, and it definitely helped me in my interview because I got to where I was. So I think it's important to do these other activities to make yourself stand out because otherwise you're going to blend in with like the other twenty interviewees who are just sitting next to you. Everyone's done machine learning projects. Everyone's done things. They're all engineers. What makes you different? Maybe you've written a book. Maybe you sing and you've like got a national award in that or something, and then you're suddenly the girl or the guy who has a national award in singing. And that makes you different. So that's probably been like my biggest tip when it comes to placements, interviews, colleges. Take a little bit of a risk and make your resume stand out. Make it different. And yeah, it might seem risky and scary, but it always will pay out in the end. Um, thank you so much. Yeah, it was absolutely wonderful to have you with us today. uh and we we had a lot of very good pointers from you which will enrich all our database and everybody who we know and really really thank you so much for coming today welcome i'm really honored that you guys like picked me to have you know with you guys today Hello.